Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am holding the camera in my hand because I'm going to be moving around and I am recording this the same day that I recorded my previous video that you saw but you won't be seeing it on the same day. I'm trying to make an excuse for wearing the same shirt but I wear the same shirts all the time so deal with it. Here's the thing. I got an idea this morning. I was like I really want to finish a quilt top, and I would like to finish it soon. I am having so much fun doing the crumb piecing again, and I will continue. But I'd like to wrap up this quilt top because I do indeed want to turn those crumb blocks into a quilt top. And I was just going to make a whole bunch of crumb blocks and sew them together and call it a day. But then I thought, I can speed up this process by taking the blocks that I have made, laying them out on a bed, and then just filling the gaps with yardage, fat quarters, a good way to use up fat quarters. And I can make some of them wonky, whatever. I don't know, but it's going to be a much quicker way to make the quilt top. And it's a way to show you guys that you can make crumb blocks and you don't have to, you know, have tons of crumbs. Just make some blocks, some smaller blocks, and we're going to, you know, sash them in a way. It's going to be weird, but... Um, you know, it's just a way to make the, the quilt top bigger, quicker, and not have to piece so many crumbs. And I got to tell you, I, I didn't even make a dent. The pile that I showed you at the beginning, um, you know, I had emptied one of those drawers that I showed you at the very beginning. And I don't know if I really showed you uh, the whole pile, but it was a big pile because that was just packed into that drawer. And it, I mean, it's, it doesn't even make a dent. This is what I have left. I'm going to have all this. <laughs> you can see, I never even went into the other drawer. That's still there. This was just one drawer. And, I mean, there's, there's just... I, I, I don't know. I could make a, a, maybe 20 quilts out of this. So my point is, if you think you don't have fabric, just grab some old clothes and cut it up, and you'll have enough fabric for a quilt top. And if not, like I said, you can add whatever yardage, leftover fabric that you have. So let me show you what I put on the bed and try to explain what I'm going to do. And I really don't know how I'm going to do it all, but, you know, we're just going to figure this out as we go. It's getting a little bit dark here, but you can see I have some blocks and they're different sizes and I'm going to leave them different sizes. So there's like three here, you know, I just rearranged them to have it work. I don't care if there's bigger gaps between them in some places. And I have four and then three more or yeah, three more and four more, four more, I think four more. And I'm just going to fill all those spaces in with other fabric. Then what I thought is if I want to continue to embellish when I take this block to the machine and add fabric around it, yeah, at that point I could add some things to that if I wanted to. So let me just get started with this and uh, we'll see how it turns out. It's actually probably a couple days after... I did my intro and I want to fill you in on a few things and I'm sitting this way because I don't want the sun in my eyeballs. I have um, like put together quite a bit of that quilt top. I'm looking over there because that's where the bed is and I wanted to tell you a couple things. First of all I did rearrange some of those blocks just because I thought it would fit a little bit better and then what I did is I started putting them together by rows in a very wonky fashion. And then after I had uh, most of the rows completed, I started by putting two rows together. Now I'm starting to put the next two rows together. And it's easier than just adding on to the previous two rows because then you end up with a lot of fabric. So I ended up with six rows. So I'm going to put two rows together, two rows together, two rows together, and then I will sew those pieces together. Now, I mentioned that I'd probably embellish the blocks. I didn't do that for the sake of time, but I will be doing much more of this. You know, I'd like to even just sometimes do individual crumb blocks and not, you know, make it where I have to hurry up and finish a whole quilt top to show you different things. One thing I really wanted to show you was how I had put fur on a 
a quilt top. That's a quilt top that I actually ended up making the quilt, and I believe I gave that to Skylar. I think she has that one. And I couldn't really remember what I did, but I do remember now. At first I thought I just put the piece of fur and zigzagged around, but I tried it on one piece, which I can show you, and it just looks messy. And then I remembered that I had put some cording around that, and it just was so cool. It was gold cording around the faux fur and it just made it pop and I really liked that. Now even on the zigzag stitching that I did, I could cover that with ribbon if I wanted to, but right now I just want to get this quilt top done and start something else. I can't remember if there were other embellishing tips and tricks that I mentioned that I would show you, but I will show you more stuff as we go. Right now, I just want to show you how I'm creating a row, and then I want to show you the weird, wild, and wacky way that I put the rows together. It's so cool, I think. It, you can't tell at all like where the rows are because I add top stitched pieces on top. So it's just so cool and very, very fun. But I'm just in a hurry to get it done. So let's go over to the machine. Actually, I'll take you to the bed first. I'll show you like part that I put together and then I'll show you how to put the next four pieces together and then I'll show you how to connect the rows. So let's get going. Let's start here. These are the four pieces that I will be putting together for you to create a row. Let me talk about the little faux fur thing. So you can see there's a zigzag around it. I'm going to show you a much better way to do this. As a matter of fact, I have two bolts of different prints that I found and I might be doing something with uh, faux fur. So subscribe so you don't miss that. And then here's just another little thing I top stitched just for added fun. But then I knew this was going to take a long time if I did a lot of embellishing, so I kind of gave up on that. Now, I will be putting fabric between these and try to make them a little bit wonky, and then we end up with a row like this. So this is a row that I've put together. Here is one big block that I made, and I left it big. I put it this way, and I just had to add some fabric on top. You can see that I haven't trimmed to make any of this even. In fact, I wish I uh, didn't trim this much because I, I wasn't sure what I was doing, and now I'm more sure, and I would have liked this to be much more uneven because uh, of the way I'm putting it together. But... That's what I did on that. Now, here are just two more rows. Again, trimmed more than I would like. Two more rows. Now, this is when I started uh, figuring out that I didn't really want to trim as much. And then this is two rows put together. And here's like a top stitch piece that I put on after the fact. See how you can't really tell where the row begins and ends because there's no straight line going all the way across. See, the line was like here, and it probably was like that, but I, no, I didn't top stitch this piece. I have a top stitched piece there. Is this top stitched? I can't even tell. There's a top stitch there. Anyway, I layered things and top stitched, and it just doesn't show where the row begins and ends. Now, it's almost a little bit easier to tell the, where the blocks are, but still they're kind of camouflaged. Like for this piece, my only part that I had that was original is here. And then this was added on to make it longer. This was added on to make it longer. And then this was added on just to make it wonkier. Here I had, uh, I believe it was all of this. No, it wasn't. I didn't have any of this at the beginning. It was just this piece there. And then this one up here. So let's grab these four pieces and go to the machine. I actually won't be taking you to the sewing machine because I don't have the time to do the double camera editing at the moment, but I will just talk you through it and you've seen me sew. If you're watching this series, you probably know how to sew, so <laughs> we will get through this. I have these smushed together just for the sake of you being able to see it in frame, but actually I'm going to be having these separated. And I'm aiming for like 34 to 36 inches wide. So I'm just going to measure. And right here I'm at 33. So I can space out a little bit more. It's just a rough estimate. And what I want to do is decide like 
you know, which blocks do I want to make longer? I kind of would like them to be a little bit different, more different in size than they are. Like this one is a little bit taller. I might make this one even a little bit taller. And I might turn one to make it kind of wonky. The first thing I'm going to do, let me just move a couple of these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add to this one, I will add to the top. This is wide enough, hang on. I'm going to add this uh, because it's wide enough, but I won't keep it this tall. So I'm just going to put this here. On this piece, I don't know, I could be good. Let's just leave this one as is. On this piece, I will add something. I'll add to the bottom this time. And it's a pretty bright one, so maybe I could go with something not as bright. Ooh, that's perfect right there. Can you even see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. And then I have one left. I'm going to go with this. So I'm just going to put that there. So now I'm just going to the machine, and I'm going to sew this one, this one, and this one. Let's take this piece by piece so you can see what I've done. I added this piece up here. I'm going to leave it tall like that. I think I will make that bottom row a tall one. And if I want, I can trim in this direction. So there's one. My next piece, I didn't do anything to this one. So I'm just leaving that one as is. Although it might need a little bit of taller stuff, I will add something to this. Let's see what we can add on there. Ooh, I like this, and I'm going to put it right here on the bottom. So I'll be right back. And now I have this. So I'm just going to trim here and here. The next one is this, and I added it onto the top going to trim it. Excellent crumbs. Baby crumbs for new blocks. And last but not least was this guy. And I think I'm going to have that be at the bottom. Trim and trim. If there's anything you don't like about your blocks or you see a mistake or whatever, you can just do some top stitching and add to it. Now this is something, see I didn't get to show you. I don't think, see this little triangle kind of sticking out? I just took a, a triangle and I folded it and folded it and just stitched it on and then I added my other piece as usual. So it gave just a little piece of fabric sticking out. I just liked that. I will be showing you a lot more things. So like I said, do subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now this, I'm not thrilled with this at all, but you know, I don't care. I'm leaving it. All right, now I need to add my in-between pieces and I can have this be up or down or wherever I can make it wonky. So I'm just going to add a strip or you can put two thin strips together and then add that, whatever you want, whatever works. Has to be long enough, that isn't, or you could put pieces together to make your strip not just one whole solid thing. I kind of went with one long piece because I just liked it to show. And it kind of does let the, the crumb blocks stick out a little bit. Okay, I think this is long enough. I like that. So that's going to go there. I want this one to be wonky. Which way? I think I want wonky this way. So we need kind of like a V-shape or we have to create a V-shape. And it's surprising how wide it has to be because of the seam allowance. And I'm going to put two different pieces there. I have this one that varies as it goes. And I think I'm going to use this more greenish side. And then I'm going to also put this print. So I'm just going to sew these two together so I can create a wider strip. And I want you to notice, I'm going to be flipping this because see, this is plain and then there's flowers there. When I connect this to this, I usually do a wider seam allowance, so I'll be losing a lot of my flowers. So I'm going to turn it this way. 
now I can lose the bulk of my seam allowance. Just It's just going to be on that green. And this and this together, it's going to be cool. It's going to let me see more of those colors. This is what I ended up with. I love it. And I am going to be sewing this one there. And I will be sewing this one, this piece to here. But I want it wonky. I think I'm going to go wonky in this direction. So when I sew, I'll actually be putting it in that direction and sewing. We'll get to that in a minute. Now let's just do one more spacer. Oh, I have a nice black piece. And can you see it? It's wide enough. We're going to be good. If my strip ends up being a little bit too narrow, I can just add to either end and make it at least 34 inches wide. I was going to put a border all around this, but I don't know if I'll have time. Let's see how much I get done today. Okay, I'm going to start with these two. I'm going to put this here and this one here. I'm purposely leaving longer ends on each end. Actually, for this one, let's try doing a longer end this way, because this is going to be the bottom of the quilt top. So I won't be needing extra there to put on top of other things. Good thinking there, Darlene. Okay, so let's just do these two together and nothing really wonky is going on. I almost just sewed through three layers. No, I have to sew this first and then open it up. Then we'll add this guy. Before I even press this open, I want to say, let's say for the hell of it, if I would have gone to the machine and actually just sewed all that down, I could have opened this, and I could have opened this, folded an edge over, and just top stitch. Now, I would have lost some of this block, but hey, you know what? Oh my god, we're going to have to do some blocks like that on purpose. I can't wait. My near mistake became an idea that I love. Holy shit. All right, but I didn't make the mistake, so we're just gonna do it the normal way, the normal weird way. Let me press it open. Now it's time to add this bugger to this bugger. And we can see that this is not quite straight, but I'm just going to put it on here and I'm just gonna, you know, just try to sew a straight line, straight-ish. And we have this, this is going to be the bottom, we have something here that we'll be able to add by top stitching. And now I'm adding this guy. And since I will be doing some top stitching, I'll be top stitching a piece here, I'm going to stick this one down a little bit and it'll give me something to top stitch onto. Next is this piece and I want it kind of wonky. Now this piece seems to be like, you know, looking like it's in that direction. So I want this one to go in this direction. So I know that I want this strip underneath, you know, I could cut it like that, but instead of cutting it, what I do is I just put it kind of where I want it. Let's move it, uh, let's move it down. Let's move it down, all the way down. Oh, I kind of like that. And that leaves, though, a lot of top stitching for me to do. Let me add a piece to this. I have a print here, some little fish. I'm going to go with that. I'm gonna just trim it a little bit. And let's add one more thing. What else can I add there? Ooh, I like that yellow. It gives a nice bright spot. So I'm just going to sew this to this and then I'm going to sew all that to this and I will be right back. All right, I love all this that's going on. Now I'm just going to trim. And when I trim, I just follow the line. You know, if it's going out that way, then I trim that way. This one is going this way, so I'm going to continue, and I'm going to trim that way. Cool beans. Okay, now we're going to add this sucker to here, and I'm going to do it kind of down low. And since I want to go in this direction, I'm just going to flip it, move it over back to toward the seam a little bit for the seam allowance, sewing right down this crooked line. I'm just going to follow this top piece. I'm just going to leave all that there. I'll trim it after. We have just one more piece to add. And I love this. Some black and it goes with some of the yellow. And let's see here. 
This one I'm going to make it wonky a little bit in this direction. And that's going to give me kind of a straight edge. Let me measure quickly. 32-ish. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I'm going to add something to this edge. I don't know what you can see. I'm terrible at this, and I'm so rushing. just want to get this done. I'm picking Derek up at the airport in a little bit. So I'm going to put this together somehow, and then I'm going to be adding there. Actually, I'm going to add a piece here first so I can deal with just this one piece. The less fabric I have to bring over to the machine, the better. So I sewed this on first, and it's going to probably be too wide, but I can trim it after. Get some of those threads out of there. Now I need to add it to here. Oh, I need to add this first. Right there, sewing down. And now we're going to add this piece. You know what? I'm not going to wonkify this one. I'm just going to kind of go like this, kind of straight up and down. Like that. And we are done. Oh, first, when we sewed this, remember there was going to be some leftover? I forgot to trim that off when I sewed in a wonky way. So what I can do is I can straighten this one out all the way across like that. And we can do a top stitch piece here. But I think I will put that top stitched piece first. Then I can just trim all the way across. It's surprising how much bigger of a piece it takes because you want to have enough uh, room to fold and press your fabric and you want to be sure you're really covering and not sewing right on the edge of this. So let me see if I can find the perfect piece. This will be big enough. I'm going to like cut it really generous. Now I'm going to fold this and press and then fold both the edges and press. Here's something I'm trying. I put the piece where I want to top stitch it. However, when I was doing that before, I was pinning it and I hurt myself so many times by stabbing myself with pins that I said, this is not happening anymore. So now I put my piece here and I just put some scotch tape to just kind of hold it into place. So I'm going to like, I'm going to my machine and I will actually start here and go down. But as soon as I start, I will just, you know, remove the tape and then I can hold it. Then I'll go in that direction. I'll remove the tape and then up here. Let's see how that works. I will report back. That worked. It didn't actually hold as much as I would have liked it to. Uh, probably black electrical tape would work better. <laughs> but then you go through a lot of tape. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. You don't have to do that much top stitching. But I just want to show you. See how that comes out? Now you have that fabric like sticking out over the edges on both sides, if I'm showing this to you correctly. And it's just cool. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to trim my edges so that they're kind of straight. So I'm turning it this way and I'm just going to fold it like the way it naturally wants to be folded. It kind of just, you know, falls into place, but I'm just going to trim it like this. I'm going to turn it this way. Now I know this is a straight edge. I know that because I just cut it. So I'm just lining that edge up to a line and I'm just pushing it over the edge. I want to make sure that when I cut, I will be cutting through all the layers. I'm going to move it down just a little bit more. These are actually new scissors and I like my old silver ones better. Where are they? Here they are. You can use a rotary cutter. You can, but I prefer to do this. I don't have a ruler long enough. I don't want one. I don't want to store anything. Please do not send me a long ruler. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's also hard because you have a lot of intersections. So let's open this and see how I did. I did a good job. See our top stitched piece right there? Looks so pretty. Okay, so now we're going to just sew this to the upper piece. You know what? I thought I remembered straightening out an edge. Well, I'm glad that I forgot that I already did that because now I got to show you how to do that. It's the same as with the top piece. But look, this piece that's going above it, 
it's pretty much straight because this was going to be the bottom piece. But then I decided I wanted this on the bottom because this was three pieces, this was four, and I just wanted it to end with four. So here's what I could do. I'm not sure I'm going to do this, but here's what I could do. I could bring this up so that most of this is touching. How we're going to do this? I'm going to try something that I haven't tried yet, and I'm going to try it with you. I'm going to trim these guys, this one and this one. This can be folded under. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm trying something wild and wacky. I'm experimenting with you as my witness. I'm going to flip this right sides together, and I'm going to sew, but only from here to here. So let's see, I'm going to flip it, make sure that I catch everything. So I'm starting where this fabric is sticking out. I'm going to start here. I'm not, I'm not touching the fabric that's sticking out. I'm going from here to here. Wait, right back. So this part looks fantastic. Now let's look at each edge here. I can have this folded under, and I could have it go... Uh, and on this edge too, and I'm just going to fold that under at the machine, and I might even fold it to kind of go to a point. Then I'm going to fold like this, and I'm just going to top stitch here, here, down here. Take apart a few of the stitches here so that I can also fold this over and top stitch. Actually, I don't think I even have to take any stitches out. So I'm going to go make that work. I will show you this at the machine another time when we do some other things, but just, you know, I'm just tucking in raw edges and top stitching. You guys, I'm so loving this. I just kind of let it, like, fall the way it wanted to fall, and I've got this nice little part sticking out. Now, I could have top stitched all along this one, you know, because it was top stitched there, but I didn't because I want to show you we don't have to do that. Now for this end. We're a little bit short. I'm going to add a piece to this because this is measuring about 34 and I don't want to trim all that loveliness off. So I'm going to add a piece to this and uh, I'll do that first. And then I will show you. Let me see, what am I going to decide on? How about a piece like this? Is this long enough? Yes, that'll work. Okay, so I didn't top stitch this onto this. I did uh, right sides together, sewed, and I sewed all the way up here, and this is naturally folded in from when we did this seam. Let me uh, trim that. So I'm going to fold this, and I could sew all the way across, or if I wanted, I could fold this at an angle just for the hell of it. I think I might. This is what I went ahead and did, just because I wanted to do something funky, so I just top stitched, and then I did indeed fold this guy under. And then I can trim this side. I think I'm going to stop here and get this portion edited. I have two more rows that I have to connect like this, and then I will have three big pieces like this that I will put together. So the next time you see me, I will, uh, I will show you what I've got and give you any last minute info that I need to give you. I don't know if I will be putting a border around it. I'm thinking maybe not, but I'm going to finish this portion here and there might be other things that I'll learn along the way. So there will be one uh, more uh, video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.